In this video, we're going to look at how to create a cloudy distortion effect in Shader Graph, and also look at how we can use some of the features added in Unity 2019.2 to improve our workflow and control rendering performance. These include grouping, coloring graph nodes, and shader precision control. In our demo scene, here we've got our environment and a magical tower with some spinning crystals. This is a nice start, but I want to apply some shader wizardry to make the crystals in the tower look a bit more magical. Let's enable the orb game object. This is a sphere with a material that's using a distortion shader I've created in Shader Graph. Let's take a look at how we built this shader and how we've created our distortion effect by opening it up in Shader Graph. If we zoom out, you can see that our shader comprises of two main components, the distortion effect and the cloud effect around the edges. Let's first take a look at how we've built our cloud effect by assigning it to our albedo and emissions. We can change the spread of the cloud from the edges using the power property, as well as change the visibility of the cloud by changing the brightness value. We can also change its color. At the start here, we begin by creating a sample texture and assigning a tiling and offset node to the UV property. We multiply a direction value by a time node and set this as our offset. This allows us to change the speed and direction of our cloud effect on our material. We then pass this through a remap node to give a bit of contrast to our clouds. If you wanted more control over the contrast, you could assign the in and out values of this remap node to properties in the blackboard to expose them as editable fields of the material in the inspector. We multiply the cloud texture with a Fresnel effect node to have it appear around the edges of our mesh instead of covering the whole mesh. Finally, we multiply the value by both the vector one to control its brightness and by a color to allow us to tint it. Next, let's take a look at how we've built our distortion component of the shader. The key part of our distortion comes from manipulating a scene color node. This node provides access to the current camera's color buffer using an input UV, which by default is the normalized screen coordinates. You can see that without anything attached, this node simply colors our material based on what our camera can see behind the mesh. By altering the input UV here and adjusting how the pixels are sampled, we can move the pixels being rendered, creating a displacement effect which distorts the image. If you've ever used a displace filter in an image editing application, the principle is the same. To do this, we start off with a sample texture node. Similar to our clouds, we've attached some nodes to our sample texture node to allow it to be tiled and offset over time. This gives us control over the speed and direction of our distortion effect. The texture we're using is a normal map of our cloud texture. This is because the normal map texture holds color pixel information that we can use to control our distortion effect in the X and Y axis. We multiply our texture with our screen position UV. This creates a new image that we will use to control how we distort the image our camera is rendering. We also then multiply by a vector 2 that allows us two controls over the strength of our distortion texture along the X or Y axis. Finally, we add our offset texture UV back onto our screen position UV and hook this into the UV property of our scene color node. So, our scene color node is now mapping the camera's color buffer to a version of the normalized screen coordinates that have had their positions displaced by our texture. This creates our distortion effect. Finally, we add our distortion effect to our cloud effect to achieve the final result of our shader. In 2019.2, Shader Graph has added support for node grouping. So, let's group all of our cloud nodes and all of our distortion nodes into two separate groups. Let's select the nodes we want to group, right-click, and choose Group Selection. This improves visibility of our shader and makes it easy to drag our nodes around. Another way we can improve visibility in Shader Graph is using the new Color Modes feature. We can use this dropdown to enable color modes and highlight nodes based on category, precision, or by a user-defined color. We can define colors of a node in this mode by right-clicking on the node and choosing Color, 
Change, and selecting a color for our node. This can be especially useful if we want to highlight subgraphs or specific function nodes. In 2019.2, Shader Graph adds the support for precision mode. We can select any node or any graph and choose either float, half, or inherit precision modes. This lets us choose between accuracy and memory usage on the GPU, which is great if we're working to specific graphics constraints on devices such as mobile. To download the demo project and try our new shader graph features for yourself, follow the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.